So one dynamic of this election that is absolutely fascinating to me is how the media is going to respond to a Joe Biden administration. So remember that even though the the main portion of the mainstream media has spent four or five years just endlessly bashing Trump, what we have to remember is how much they financially benefit from that and from having Trump to cover and to bash. Remember that during the 2016 election cycle, the calculations were, and this is an imperfect deal, but that Trump got over $6 billion in free media. That was over double what Hillary got. Bernie got almost none, right? Trump is a unique attraction to media outlets because he puts eyes on the screen. Whether you're complimenting the guy like Fox or or bashing the guy like MSNBC, you, it, it keeps eyes on the screen. And we have to remember, guys, that's what these networks are here to do. They are not here to inform you. They are not here to bring you commentary or news or be objective or be ethical. What they're there to do is keep your eyeballs on the screen so that their advertisers keep paying them a handsome buck. That's what these are corporations, right? So I am thoroughly fascinated to see how they handle losing their cash cow. When, when Trump is no longer in the White House, do they, do they try to cover Joe and just watch their ratings fucking tank? Or do they try to grasp on to Trump still? And, you know, that's really, I imagine like Rachel Maddow, guys, is going to spend four years, you know, when Trump, so let's take a step back. Trump is going to float that he's running in 2024. Whether he runs or not, I have no idea, but I can promise you he's going to float it because then we'll spend the next four years in this mode of speculation where he can keep eyes on him, keep attention on him, right? Keep headlines coming his way where it's like, is he going to run or is he not, right? Well, if, if he does that, and I strongly suspect that that's what Trump's going to do, then the Rachel Maddows of the world are going to grasp onto that, right? Right. She's going to spend four years talking about how Putin wants Trump to win in 2024. She's going to spend four years talking about how we should charge Donald Trump, right? So that she can keep those eyeballs on the screen. The eyeballs are there for the Trump derangement. They're not there for news. Those eyeballs will turn the channel if she starts talking about legislative stuff that Joe Biden's doing. They'll fall asleep. Okay. And and by the way, guys, like I'm not I'm not just saying that as my opinion. The, the the ratings for cable news, for evening news, for political commentary has gone through the roof over the last four years at the expense of other programming. So if you go look at like the TV ratings, things like sports and sitcoms and TV shows and you know, they've kind of taken a, a hit at at the to the benefit of the cable news of the world, the ABCs and CBS and right, the evening news, the politics, the the put Trump up on the screen and talk about what he tweeted about. That has drawn viewers from other programming. So are we gonna see under Joe like, do people care a hell of a lot less what Trump says when he's just some random citizen, right? Like, when he's the ex-president that no longer has the the nuclear codes and the White House, and do, do people just kind of go back to sleep? Or do people grasp on to the, we need to charge Trump, and you know what I mean? It will be very fascinating to see. And remember, guys, coming out of 2016, one of Trump's big talking points was charging Hillary. Lock her up, right? Remember, this was one of the big messages that he had that was so successful is is basically just dragging what a horrendous politician Hillary Clinton is and and, and how she's a liar and, and corrupt and fraudulent and all this stuff. So he played that up culturally and electorally to help him win an election. And then he just completely turned the page on it when he was actually elected. Did you once hear Trump talk about locking Hillary Clinton up once he was president? He didn't care anymore. So it will be really fascinating to see if 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 the left and I put left in quotes because it's not really left. It's like it's like center right anti Trump folks, right? Um, will will the media that has has embodied that Trump derangement? And by the way, guys, when I say Trump derangement, Trump is terrible. I don't mean to like water down how bad Trump is. I say Trump derangement because it's so obvious how uniquely he's covered compared to other presidents and. Um, you know, I, I support the media being hard on any and all presidents. The Trump derangement is when what we get as a result of that, where people are unwilling to criticize other presidents for the same actions. 
So the derangement is not, I'm not saying like people are wrong in thinking Trump is terrible. I'm saying that they're wrong in not also thinking other presidents are terrible. It goes the other way, you see. Um, anyhow, that derangement is, has been the whole cash cow, guys, for all of these outlets. What's, what are the headlines at the Washington Post and the New York, and the New York Times going to look like for the next four years? Russia trying to steal election for Trump in 2024? Right. It, it sure as hell. They're not going to get the same viewership as they've gotten over the last four years if their headline is, you know what I mean? Biden and Bernie fighting over health care. People are just going to go to sleep. And I'm not saying that's right, but. Right. We have to exist in reality. <laughs> so, um, you know, w- w- will be very interesting to see what happens with these ratings. It'll be very interesting to see if these hosts and producers and columnists and you know what I mean? editorial boards, etc. It'll be very interesting to see if they pivot in um, a, a direction that is actually more like covering the president or if they just keep latching on to Trump. And I really do, guys, I, th- I think it's the latter because th- that's their cash cow. That's all that they have. R- remember their incentive. Don't for a second think that Rachel Maddow's incentive is to bring you quality commentary. It's not. Or, or, you know, Lawrence O'Donnell or, I mean, fill in the blank, Jake Tapper or, I mean, anyone at Fox. <laughs> you like, you know, they're there to make money, guys. They're corporations. They're corporations. They would cancel good commentary if it wasn't bringing in money. That's, they're, they're operating on a pure profit incentive. So losing Trump is bad news for even the ones who claim that they were rooting for Trump to lose, right? It'll be fascinating to see.